Eben Novi Williams, the man who broke the story, joins us from the Charleston airport uh, because, of course, uh, Eben, th- what a crazy day, I'm sure, for you. Sure, you didn't plan to break the story while sitting in an airport, but alas, here you are. What can you tell us about You know what you learned that made you go like, wow, okay, this is it. And and it's done. Dan Snyder has sold the wa- or has agreed in principle to sell the Washington Commanders to Josh Harris for six billion dollars. Deal has been reached, and, and Craig, I'm expecting this to, to move fairly quickly from here. Get the lawyers finalizing the, the the little details, get it to the league, and I wouldn't be shocked if this is announced in, in the next uh, early next week. Would be uh, would be my guess. And and yeah, what a process. I know you've been covering it more than almost anybody. Such a bizarre. In the situation, given everything that Dan has been through, what, what he is facing moving forward, the, 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 the way the league has treated him, the, the various bidders, Jeff Bezos, is he interested, is he not? Um, a, a, a truly bizarre process. But in the end, uh, the, the group that has been there since the beginning and was probably the realest of all of them ends up being the group that gets this deal done at $6 billion. So yesterday we have the news from Puck first, which a bunch of others confirmed. Um, and I will say just between, I mean, between us and the audience, but like, you know, I thought I was like, Evan is conspicuously quiet on this news. I wonder if there's something else going on. And sure enough, you popped the story today. But a bunch of folks report yesterday that that Jeff Bezos is out on the same day. Tillman Fertitta says like, yeah, I bid six billion or five point six. And, you know, they wanted more and I wasn't willing to go higher than that. Is it just kind of the the realization for Dan that like, yeah, this was the only bid. Is that why this finally comes to a close when it doesn't feel like from Harris's side, there's been much movement in months? Yeah, I think I think the way that Josh and Tillman approached this was fairly similar. They just maybe had slightly different prices. I don't know for sure, a hundred percent, that that Josh was the last group or the only group fully at the table. But I don't get the sense that there was a lot of them. And you know, the, the the Jeff Bezos question obviously loomed over this for so long. He's he's so rich and he's in such a different position that he doesn't have to go through as you and I have talked about. Doesn't have to go through any of the processes. So the fact that he had not been engaged at all didn't mean that he couldn't call up the day uh, today or tomorrow and and, and get that deal done it seemed like once definitively that that dan and his people understood that that was not going to come from jeff i do think that made this process i think fairly fairly simple you look at who you have you look at how many people are real and if it's just josh again that makes this process uh even simpler so in the end i don't know exactly how many bidders or how many people were real fully financed or, or whether tillman came with an offer but didn't have all the money and just didn't feel like it was worth going down that process i don't know but Josh has been the group that people have been talking about the most and been there through this process. And I don't think that his $6 billion probably may be a little bit higher than his original offer. But knowing Josh and the way that he invests, I, I, he's not someone who's going to you know, really really splurge more than what he thinks an asset's worth. I, I can't imagine he went too, high, too much higher than, than he was uh, a couple months ago. Again, the breaking news earlier today, Dan Snyder has agreed in principle to sell the Washington Commanders to Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails, Magic Johnson, that group for $6 billion. Evan Novi williams who broke the news, is with us from Sportico. Uh, so about that group, is it just those three? Like, what do we know about the group? I, I heard someone say yesterday that there's more uh, folks involved here like what do we know about the group and kind of to the extent that we know anything how it will run as an operational ownership group I, I would think almost definitely that there's more i don't know that for sure but i would be shocked if it was the three of them in fact i can almost guarantee that there are others and oftentimes they, they could bring people in even after the fact now right if you think about the the broncos sale when rob walton got that deal done a number of his limited partners like lewis hamilton like Melody Hobson, like Condoleezza Rice, they were announced and done after the deal was reached. So it's not uncommon to have an agreement in place. And oftentimes it's easier to raise money once that happens. It, it, it's maybe even harder for Josh to say, hey, Craig, here's what I need. We're going to make a run at this. It's easier to be like, hey, this is the deal I have. These are the economics. Do you want to participate in it? So I, I don't know if there are groups that have already signed on as Magic have. I don't know if there's ongoing conversations, but I would be shocked if in the end this is just a three-person group. I would almost guarantee that there's going to be others and maybe even a, a significant chunk of other people as well. So we know kind of what Josh Harris's style is, at least I know as a basketball guy, like with the Sixers, I, I'm less familiar with how he's run the Devils, but from an ownership, like a sports owner stand, standpoint, how, what, how would you categorize or how would you characterize 
slash categorize Josh owner or Josh Harris's ownership style and, and how he's probably going to run this team. He is a, a, a very prominent and very successful investor, and he is very much in this what I would call this new class as of the last five year, five ten years, new class of, of sports owners. Right, it's it's a different group than you see largely in in, in the NFL right now. Right, there, there's a lot of people like Josh in, in the NBA side, not as many on the on, on the NFL side. He's well versed in stadium construction and all that. Right, not only does he own the, the arena where the Devils play, but he's in the process right now with the Sixers of getting a new downtown arena, and that's going to be priority number one through four on, on the big bucket list items once this deal is done, right, is figuring out exactly what that looks like. That is going to be an extremely expensive endeavor. He obviously knows that. I would imagine one of the reasons why Josh and Mitch have have a bit more partners or more they're going to announce is because this is not a deal that costs $6 billion. This is a deal that costs significantly more than $6 billion because there needs to be a new stadium and it needs to happen relatively soon. Uh, so I, I would bet that that's one of the biggest priorities. The NFL, as you know, is, is just structured a little differently from a salary cap standpoint. It's not like baseball where Steve Cohen buys the Mets and, and suddenly the payroll's twice as big. So it's, it's not as though his, his tolerance for spending relative to his peers is, matters all that much on, from a player standpoint in D.C., but it definitely matters for the stadium. It matters for things like practice facility. It matters for what you pay your coach and who your coach is. It matters for executives that you hire, all those things. And again, I don't expect Josh to spare any money when it comes to outfitting the commanders in a way that that puts them in a position to win. Yeah, Evan Novi Williams from Sportico is with us. Uh, It's worth mentioning that Harris is the guy who bought the Sixers and then greenlit the process uh, and that whole thing, which is very different than the way the commanders have been run, or for that matter, as I've spent the last couple of days railing about the Wizards, how any D.C. sports team has been run outside the Nationals recently. I don't even know how much of that was on purpose, but that's a that's a separate <laughs> conversation. We'll return to that later. On the Bezos front, he loomed over this thing from go. I remember us talking way back when, November, or, you know, we talked again in January. It was still like, well, maybe he could always come in. Why ultimately, to the best of your knowledge, did he not get involved here? I wish I had sources with direct knowledge of Jeff Bezos' thinking. Uh, my, the, the general feeling from people that are in the know at least a little bit is that uh, he's very interested in the, in the Seahawks. The Seahawks are currently owned by the, the trust of, of Paul Allen, and that is a team that is going to have to sell not immediately, but my guess is some point in the next 10 years. And Jeff obviously has a lot of ties both to D.C. but also to, to Seattle. Um, it's probably an easier transaction for him. It doesn't have to happen immediately. It doesn't get tied into all the kind of back and forth about will Dan Snyder sell to him or will he not. So I don't know exactly why Jeff chose not to bid. I don't honestly don't even know how seriously he considered it. But, but just because there was at least some sort of idea that he might be interested. Um, I do think this process took longer than it probably would have, certainly longer than it would have, absolutely, if Jeff had either publicly said, I'm not interested at all, or if Jeff didn't exist in, in, in that scenario. So what are the hurdles remaining? There was the reporting from the Washington Post about the indemnification. Um, there, there's kind of all these details that, that, you know, depending on who you ask, are really important or not that important. What what hurdles remain to finalizing this thing and for Dan Snyder to no longer own the team? From what I understand, the lawyers currently, as, as you and I are talking on, on Thursday, going through kind of the final deal point, getting, getting the, the, the nuts and bolts on, on the legal side done. Once they have an agreed contract, that goes to the NFL, NFL looks through it, um, and then they, they plan to sign it, right? I, the indemnification is a good question. I don't know exactly where or when in that process things happen. Um, I, I do know, and, and, and you know this as well, a lot of NFL owners like the idea of having a different owner in Washington. Um, so I imagine the league is going to want to move fairly quickly. Josh is very approvable. He is already a, a limited partner with the Steelers. So to the extent that this is a club that is wary of who they let in, he's already got a foot in the in, in the club already. Um, I don't know that much about Mitchell Rails' business, but my general feeling is that when you get to this point where you have an agreement in place, there's a pretty good understanding of what the other owners, what the league are going to feel about the prospective buyers group. So I don't imagine that the, the approval process being any sort of, a, of an issue. I don't imagine it's going to take very long. And I don't think there's going to be any surprises when this group finally does go to the 
vote and the consideration of all the other owners. And I'm assuming that'll happen at the, the Minnesota meetings, or will they call a special it, meeting potentially and do it even some, sooner? Sometimes it, it happens faster, other times it doesn't. Um, it, the fact that those meetings are happening relatively soon um, doesn't, I think it could happen then, but I would also, again, not be shocked if, if, if the, there's so many motivations right now to get this deal done, um, not to mention the fact that throughout this whole process, everybody ha- has told me, and, and it's honestly, it's not a secret, that, that Dan is a fairly tempestuous businessman, right? Um, I think the idea of getting this thing papered, approved, sealed, and done, if there's any way to fast track that, I imagine the NFL will look at um, and maybe try to uh, try, try to explore all those avenues. All right, I'm going to... Uh take my journalism professor's advice here and just at the end say is there anything else that i should be asking you about or anything else that you would like to add uh to this story no it's 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 a good question and honestly no but i think in the in the coming days and weeks i think we're going to learn hopefully it's it's us it's portico but i think you're going to see a lot more about who is who is specifically in this group um i'm sure they're going to come out not in the next week but at some point with a plan about what the stadium looks like and all that um but knowing what i know about josh i think he's probably going to move quickly i think he's probably going to spend a lot of money in a lot of these areas to get things in order very quickly and i'm fascinated my question and obviously don't have the answer i'm fascinated to see where commanders fans how quickly they come back to this team it's it's no secret that this was one of the the, the, the most attended franchises in the in, in the NFL ten years ago, and it was lowest in attendance in the NFL last year. Um, there there is a relationship that needs to be repaired between the Commanders and uh, and and ownership and its fans. And I'm very curious if that happens automatically because someone not named Dan Snyder is owning this team. And I'm also very curious the lengths to which Josh and his group feel like they need to, to make those inroads and make those make that process back towards commanders fans as well yeah by the way real quick because you mentioned the stadium like how confident are you that josh harris and especially mitchell rails who's so connected in dc political circles can get the rfk site if they want it and then also what about the i know the stadium process in philly is super political as well like how is harris going to be able to balance those two projects assuming they're happening at the same time I think you nailed it, Craig. I think one of the main reasons that, that Mitchell Rails is involved in this and one of the reasons why he is such a, a valuable piece of this puzzle is because of his experience real estate-wise and otherwise in the D.C. area. And I, I, I think it's also, we should not discount, again, the fact that there are a lot of politicians that, that did not like Dan and did not like the way that Dan ran this team and were probably going to be a lot more amenable to having conversations with uh, someone who is not named Dan that, that, that owns this team again. So I think there's a lot of political goodwill that this group is just going to get just by virtue of, again, not being the old people. Um, and then, yes, lean heavily on, on Mitch and his connections in the D.C. area and go from there. I don't know, and I have not heard much about exact stadium sites, um, so, so I, I don't have anything really to comment on that. But, again, I don't, I, I don't think whether it's at the RFK site or whether it's somewhere else, um, I would imagine this, this group is going to have what it takes to get that done and, and, and to get that process started relatively quickly. Evan Novi williams broke the story for Sportico, immediately hopped on the, uh, the Zoom with us here, live from the Charleston airport. Evan, appreciate you, sir. Safe travels, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Thank you, Craig. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.